So in this case, they're asking us to classify what type of triangle we have. So we've talked about triangles by their sides. We could either have an equilateral, we can have an isosceles, or we can have an escalene. I gave you guys all that we talked about all three definitions of those, all right? But we need to look at them, and then also we have points. Now, if I have no idea what to do and I'm given three points, the first thing I'm going to do to try to think through this is to plot these points. Try to determine what these points look like. So that's going to be the first thing I'll do. And actually, I'll do it over here. So let's just plot the points. So everybody should at least have the, plot of po the points plotted. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. That's x. Negative 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. Does everybody see that? So now what we need to do is, well, to determine if it's equilateral, that means, Taylor, how many sides are equal? Three. Three. Mario, if it's isosceles, how many sides are equal? All three. No, three. equilateral is all three. Two. Isosceles is two. And Angel, if it's scalene, how many sides are equal? None. Thank you, Angel. You have a really high voice. Yes, right. it's just zero, right? So how are we going to determine the dip? How are we going to determine the length? Well, this one, you guys can see this is a horizontal line, right? It's not changing up or down. So this one's fairly easy. What we can do for this one, Mario, is just count the number of units. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that one has a length of 8. But now we need to determine what is the length of the other two sides. Well, guys, you can't just estimate and say, well, uh, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't work like that. All right, that'd be an estimation, and we're trying to find the exact value. So does anybody remember a formula that we did between two points to find the distance? Yes, Zach? Well, the slope form is going to tell us, yes, the rate of change, but I want to find the distance. What was that formula that had distance, and it was a formula? Yes, Zach? Distance. Right, well, the name of it, though, was the distance formula, right? So that was something that we learned beginning of class. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to constantly be going back to this, right? Hence why I said you really need to make sure you know this formula, because it's going to keep on coming back, and, and you're not always going to have it um, available to you. So yes, the distance formula. And the way the distance formula goes is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. We have to know the distance formula. We are going to continue using this formula. It is going to pop up in questions, and it's not going to be what I'm quite, I'm not going to say find the distance between two points, but I'm going to ask you questions, and you're going to have to know how to find the distance between those two points to ask them my original question that I'm asking. All right? So this is going to be embedded now in the rest of this curriculum. So um, Damon, if you wrote down the wrong problem, what I'd like you to still do is go ahead and write this one down as well, OK? So now what we're going to do is we need to find the distance. Well, oh, I didn't label these. That's x, that was y, and that's z. All right, so we already know the distance between x, x and z. Let's find the distance between x and y. So let's find this distance between x, y. Well, what I can do is then label them. I'll call that x1, I'll call that y1. y, I'll call that x2, and I'll call that y2. So I say the distance between x to y is going to equal to x2, which would be negative 3 minus negative 4 squared plus 7 minus a negative 2 squared. And then let's find the distance. Before I even simplify this, let's find the distance between yz. Because remember, guys, we don't even need to actually find everything. We don't need to do so much of the work that all you guys are doing. Now, I'm, I'm going to maybe be a little confusing with you. If this is x1, that's x2, I'll call this x3. You don't have to. But remember, when you're finding the distance, all you're doing is you're finding the difference between the two x coordinates. All right. So in this case, I want to find y to z. 
I just need to find the difference between these two. So I'm just going to do x3 minus x2. It's the same thing as x2 minus x1, all right? So therefore, I'll have 4 minus a negative 3 squared plus negative 2 minus 7 squared. So negative 3 minus a negative 4, that's going to be square root of 1 squared. And 7 minus negative 2, that would be plus 9 squared. Okay, 9 squared is 81, plus 1 squared is 2. So I have the square root of 82. I haven't talked about simplifying square roots yet, so we'll just leave it at that. Over here, I have 7. 7 squared is 49. And then over here, I have 9, which is 81. OK, so that's going to be 132. That'd be, um, oh, I'm sorry, 100, um, 120, so that'd be 130. So ladies and gentlemen, are, can you see, are these the same? We don't even know what the exact measurement is, but if they're the same, no. So guess what this is? Scaling. Okay. Damon. <laughs>